In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for Cantate, the fifth Sunday after Easter, is taken from Isaiah chapter 12. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away, that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from James chapter 1. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of firstfruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, the right hand of the Lord exalts, the right hand of the Lord does valiantly. Alleluia. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, but now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. 
And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he would take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. One of the great dangers that we have in our world today, especially as Christians, is to make the gospel into something less than what it is. And I think the way that we do this fairly frequently is by making the gospel basically about one person of the Trinity, so that the other two have virtually nothing to do with regard to it. And this can happen any number of ways. I mean, we could make a gospel of the Father only, so to speak, by making it only about believing in God in some vague sense. That as long as you believe in God, that's all that really matters and It doesn't matter what you believe beyond that. We don't need Jesus to get to heaven. It just becomes a matter of faith. But that's obviously not the gospel, is it? Because we're missing something. We're missing what the Son has done, and we're also missing what the Holy Spirit does as well. But we can also have a gospel of the Son only. And I think this is a real temptation for us as Lutherans, to have a gospel which is only about Jesus and what he has done and making him to do absolutely everything, so that he has to twist the Father's arm to forgive us, and so that the Holy Spirit ends up doing, well, nothing at all. And then we start to wonder when we get to a passage like John chapter 16, what Jesus is talking about when he talks about the coming of the Helper, the coming of the Holy Spirit. So it's not just about the Son, either. Now, of course, there is a other danger of making it only about the Holy Spirit, a gospel that's all about power and miracles. But I don't think that's our danger for today. Our danger, I think, is making too much of the other ones so that the Holy Spirit is left with nothing to do. And so to understand the gospel, Christians, we have to understand how all three of the persons of the Trinity are involved in the gospel. The Father who so loved us that he sent his only Son. The Son who has given himself so that we would be saved. And also the Holy Spirit who speaks to us, who gives us life, and who keeps us in that life. When we understand all three of them together, then we will understand the gospel of God. But when we come to trying to understand how the Spirit works in the gospel, we first have to understand something about who he is. And I think that's the most important thing to say right off the bat. He is a who. He is a he. He is the third person of the Trinity. You know, sometimes we get this weird notion that the Holy Spirit is just God's life or some 
vague notion that we have of God. But he is more than that. He is the third person of the Trinity, as much God as the Father and the Son, because we meet him throughout all of Scripture, right from the very beginning, when he was there at the creation, hovering over the face of the deep like a bird hovering in the sky. And we also meet the Holy Spirit throughout all of the Old Testament when he spoke through the prophets, giving them the very words of God so that they could bring it to God's people. And we meet the Holy Spirit also in the New Testament, the things that he does like descending like a dove at Jesus' baptism, driving Jesus out into the wilderness, or even when he comes down at Pentecost, like fire, to begin the work of the church. Yes, Christians, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is fully God, and he is fully involved with our salvation. He is coming to us even today, in the Word and in the sacraments, to bring us that new life. And so when we come here in John chapter 16, we have a small glimpse of the Holy Spirit's work because Jesus says he speaks to us and tells us the things that he has heard, heard from the Son and heard from the Father, so that whenever we hear the voice of God in the Scriptures, we are hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. The scriptures themselves were written by the Spirit. As Peter says, that men did not speak of their own accord or have their own interpretations, but they were carried along by the Holy Spirit so that every word that we hear in the scriptures is, in fact, his voice. But what is that message that the Holy Spirit is proclaiming to us? What is it that he has to say? Well, the first thing that he says to us is a word of judgment. Because if we did not have that word of judgment, we would not know what it means to sin. This is why Jesus says that when the Helper comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. The Holy Spirit teaches us that we are sinners. The Holy Spirit teaches us through the word that we need to be saved. And he also shows the whole world that they have fallen short of the glory of God. If we are here today, Christians, believing in God, it is because the Spirit has first shown us our need for God and shown the world of their need for God. But the Holy Spirit also convicts the world concerning righteousness, because Jesus goes to the Father, and you will see him no longer. To understand this, we have to understand what Jesus is talking about. This is what Paul says, that he is being vindicated by the Spirit, by which he means the world had said all kinds of nasty things against Jesus, calling him a liar, calling him a sinner, saying that he was not the Son of God. But when Jesus rose on the third day, the Holy Spirit proved that he was, in fact, telling the truth. He proved that Jesus was the Son of God, because only God could rise from the dead. And therefore, because the Holy Spirit has proven this to the world, It shows the world that they were wrong about Jesus to their everlasting shame. But Jesus also says that he will convict the world concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. And by which he means the Holy Spirit speaks the great message of the gospel, the message that Satan has been defeated, that death has been crushed underfoot, The ruler of this world has been judged. His judgment is sure, and he can never go back. Jesus has won, and that is the message that the Holy Spirit proclaims to you this day. But the Holy Spirit does not only speak a word of judgment. 
The Holy Spirit also speaks to you this day the word of life. That's why we call him the giver of life in the creed, the one who has brought you to faith in the first place. We have the word of God, the living voice of the Holy Spirit, and that word is life and truth. So because you are here today, Christians, you are here because of the Holy Spirit, because he has spoken to you and given you that life. And as we know from our catechism days in the book of Titus, the Holy Spirit is also involved in our baptism, because when we have put on Christ, we were washed in that Holy Spirit. You have been made holy in the Holy Spirit. He is the one who has made you a Christian in the first place. He's not just there hanging off in the distance wondering what he's supposed to do. He is the one who has made you a Christian this day. And he is the one who will keep you being a Christian as well. Because that's also what the Holy Spirit does for us. He keeps us in that faith so that we continue to believe in Christ. As Paul says in Romans, the Holy Spirit prays with us in our hearts so that we are able to cry, Abba, Father. The very reason that you continue in faith is because of his work and because of the things that he has done for you. Yes, dear Christians, the Holy Spirit is active in the gospel because we live in the age of the Spirit the great joyful age when all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. The work of the Spirit goes on even now in his church so that we are here today receiving his word, receiving his gifts, and being built up in that same Spirit. So, dear Christians, remember... The gospel is not just about one person of the Trinity at the expense of the other two. It's not just the gospel of the Father. It's not just the gospel of the Son, nor is it just the gospel of the Spirit. But the Father who loves you has sent his Son and his Spirit to save you. The Son who loves you has become one of us so that we would be delivered from sin. And the Holy Spirit, who also loves you, has spoken to you a word of life and made you a Christian so that you are in him forever. The gospel of God is the work of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now to the Holy Spirit, the active and living fire of Pentecost, together with the the Father and the Son, your glory, honor, and worship now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we thank you for the salvation you have given us in Jesus Christ, in whose righteousness we are clothed. Help us always to make a joyful noise to you, calling on your name in every time and place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the prophets, bless the prophets' sons. Help all pastors to be diligent in their studies, faithful in their prayers, steadfast in their faith, and compassionate toward your people whom they serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, You call children to yourself, and do not hinder them from coming to Jesus. Bless all children and young people, so that they would be brought up by faithful parents in the fear of you, receive a good education, and grow into service in home, church, and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, bless all mothers this day, so that they would carry out their calling in godliness and honor in loving and caring for their children. Help all children to cherish and honor their mothers as you have commanded us to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, you have set those in authority over us for our good. Give them wisdom to rule according to your will 
especially during the present time, to bring forth justice and peace in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all comfort, comfort those who suffer and all those who have requested our prayers, especially those whom we name in our hearts before you. Remind them of your love even in the midst of suffering, knowing that your will works all things together for good for those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.